Hello everybody. In this uh, tutorial I will show you how to create automatic packages for chocolatey. I'm talking about this thing. So if you are not a chocolatey package maintainer this will not be of interest to you. And if you are and uh, you're keeping let's say more than five packages uh, you really shouldn't do it manually and you should utilize some form of, some form of automatic framework uh, that will uh, make it easier for you to be in sync with vendor releases. So, so far we had uh, Catherine to do that and uh, it was very hard to set up and didn't provide any reporting and uh, it used graphical interface and XML files to uh, provide all that uh, and it simply wasn't good enough so for that reason we created uh, automatic update module using PowerShell only and uh, I will show you how to use it to create updater for single package and then how to use it to update all of your packages and some other things that you will see. Oh, documentation is really good. Uh, you can see here all the various methods to install it. You can use PowerShell Gallery, Chocolatey. You can download release from GitHub or take the latest artifact from the app Vayer build server. Now I will install it using Chocolatey will force it since I already have it but this is very fast and in only a couple of seconds you will have it on your own system you only need PowerShell uh, 4 to have pre-installed for it which comes with Windows uh, 8 and newer so here it is, it's already done it shows some functions that you can use so let's go and create a package for uh, awesome application the name Pandot that is used to convert one markup to another and uh, this is its github page this is its github release page actually I'm looking at the latest version and we are going to create automatic updater and entire package so in the updater we will actually grab this page, parse it for information about the latest version and we can see at the end that we have releases for all supported distributions. Here is the Windows one. So we will have to obtain this URL from this page and parse the version. So let's go and do that. This is my uh, repository of chocolatey packages. So I'll create a new folder here. Actually, I will copy the template folder and name it pandas. Okay. I will just remove some stuff that we are not going to use here. So, okay, those are all files beside the standard chocolate install PS1 script that is used for installer. O framework is using update ps1 script that is in the root of the package directory and uh, you describe the updater using powershell and few functions in it so let's take a look at chocolate install first i will just remove parts that are not needed here okay this is pretty basic stuff I will just enter pandots here and it's an MSI package okay and it doesn't actually have 64-bit stuff so I will remove them and the silent targets we need to change it so this is it this will all this is already enough to install pandots but as you can see we don't have url and checksum and we will intentionally leave those two fields empty because they're going to get populated by the updater so let's save this and 
uh, switch to to updater. Okay, so this is the template for the updater. O uh, module expects you to create two functions. One is called get latest, and uh, O will call it to get the latest information about the software in question. And once we have some information like version and URLs and so on, we need to uh, replace certain things in package files and for that reason we have search and replace PowerShell function. Uh, once we have those two functions we simply call update and uh, it will use those two functions to get everything done. So first we need the page where releases are published so that is our github page so I will just switch to releases it's here and specify it like this. Let me execute this immediately in the PowerShell so we can follow what's going on. Now we are implementing a get latest. Uh, we will download this page using invoke web request and then we need to somehow get the links of URLs and for that thing we have very ha very handy links property that will return all the links from the releases page uh, but there are many links there and we need to filter them out so I will use where object or shorter with question mark to just look at the href attribute of the of the of all of the links on this page and we'll match only those that end up with MSI that's why we have a dollar at the end so that it doesn't match something in the middle and we will only return href attribute because otherwise all uh, all HTML attributes will be returned. So once we execute this we can see all the MSI links on on this releases page and we can see that the first one is actually the one we want. It contains the URL, it, it is missing the the domain here so we will need to add it and it has the version already as a part of the path so let's say that our URL is actually just the first one select first one let's see okay that's good so I will take this line and copy it here okay this is our URL so so now we just need to get a version and uh, to get the version, once we have this URL, we will split it to get the version like this. This will give us an array of all, of, the, of all the URL parts and we can see that the version is second to the last. Again, fit it to select last one, but it, since it's not the last one, we will just skip one. And that's it. Our version is ready. We will copy paste it here, but we forgot to add the domain. And this is already over. So we have extracted all the information we need. And we need URL and version and we just need to return those to the O in a hash table. So this is hash table and we will just uh, return those fields. We can now check if everything works correctly. I will copy paste entire function here, here and we can call O get latest to see if hash table get returned. So this is it. We returned everything O needs to know to provide the updater. Uh, so, wo so what do we do next? Uh, next we need some of those information to 
to replace current URL and checksum in the chocolate install. So that is uh, done in search and replace. This hash table we returned earlier is called latest, as you can see here. So we can reference it while replacing stuff. We can actually add replacement in any number of files, but we do it here only for chocolate install PS1. And on the left side are regular expressions to match, on the right side are replacements. So I will first remove 64-bit stuff since we don't need them. So now this first line say to match lines that start with URL. So this is that is this line and to replace it with latest URL 32. This is already set up correctly. The next line will we'll do the same for checksum, but as you may notice, we didn't actually calculate it or parse it from the site. It, it isn't available here, but that is one of those things that O does automatically. So you don't have to parse from the site or get the file yourself to calculate the checksum. O will do that among the other things. So this is already done. Uh, we will just now have to say to the update that we don't want checksum uh, calculated for everything, for both 64-bit and 32-bit version, because it will do that automatically by default. We just want for 32-bit version. Uh, now, we will just switch to this folder, open, open uh, PowerShell in it, to try to execute this function. So now we are in the pandots uh, folder. Okay, we can try to run the updater and see what's going on. And first thing you notice that it will do URL check. So all all fields in the latest hash table that contain that start with the word URL will be checked for existence and correct meme type. So this URL certainly works. If we made some mistake here, for instance, if we forgot to add the domain, it would fail because URL doesn't exist. And that is what happened here. It would also fail if if version is not correctly set. And it reports currently that this is not the version. This is the regular expression used to check it. As you can see, this package currently doesn't have update and that is judged by the new spec version. So, currently new spec version is set in a new spec file and since it's the same as remote version, the package is not updated. So, uh, if we really want to update the package now, we will have to force it. And we can do that by providing a parameter to update function named force. But we will not do that here because this parameter is something that is done in ad hoc manner since no new version is available. We will have to force the update. So I will add our force parameter which we set it to true. And now in this shell session every package that I run updater for will be first. So let's run the updater again. And you can see now that no new version is found, but update is first, forced. Uh, and it will automatically download the files to calculate the checksum. As you can see here. It's done that and now it will update the files, but it will show first all the information that that is collected. So those two fields are the ones you provided in the O get latest function and those four fields is something that O generated for you. So you can see that checksum got generated, that its type got generated and so on. And then we can see the replacements done in file. This is uh, mandatory stuff, pan.snowspec, 
and the version will be changed by O automatically, so you don't have to search and replace for it. And those two fields that we specified got replaced, so we can see that the editor is already complaining that files were changed outside of it. So I will switch and reload, and you can see that it populated those fields. Once the package updater updated the package, we should test it to see if it actually works. For that reason, O exposes test package function that has several parameters. You can test installer, uninstaller, or both if you don't specify anything. You can run the test locally or using uh, Vagrant. I have chocolatey test environment uh, cloned here, so I can just specify its directory where it's located for test package to, to run it. But I don't specify this parameter, I put it in my profile. As you can see, just the same as with many other O functions, they can accept parameters via global variable. So this is something I rarely change and I want all my packages to be tested in inside this sandbox. So, uh, if I uh, don't want to use Vagrant while this is set, I will just pass null and it will run locally. So now I will test on installer. I have the virtual box machine started, but you don't have to have it started just to speed things up. This will show us, show us some basic information about package that is being tested and if it's being tested locally or on Vagrant. Now the test already is, is starting. You can test uh, not single package, uh, not only single package, but several packages, even remote ones. But uh, you can see more about it in the documentation. And this is already done. So it downloaded the pandas, uh, installed it, and that's it. We can then enter the the shell in the virtual box to see if pandas is actually available. It is. So it's installed correctly here. We can check if if it actually works. It looks it's like working. So that's it. We can now test on install. If we want to do that, it's sometimes uh, needed to watch what happens here because things can pop up and we don't want that. But it usually isn't needed. Here you can see all the all the options for this uh, run. Okay, so it's testing on install now. You see that it's successfully uninstalled and that's it. Uh, this is really, really useful way of testing packages because you don't have to leave the, the folder at all where the package is located, where, where you run updater. So we created package updater for Pandots here and we come to the main point of using the framework now. Once you created multiple O packages, you have a single function to uh, that you can call to update all of them. So I will move to the root of my repository. You can see all the packages I maintain here. And some of them are manual. So we have a function lso that will return only O packages, those that have update pass one script in them. And I can simply call update all. We'll feed it to table. And it will execute updaters for each of them in separate threads, so it will work very fast. It will finish 50 packages under a minute. There it is. It's already done. It will return array of objects. You can inspect any of them. Uh, but we don't call the function update all on its own. We put it in a script. 
it's update all ps1 script this is it and uh, we put it in a script because it accepts a number of options uh, but you don't really uh, need to use any of those options it's basically zero configuration stuff uh, but in order to utilize all the nice uh, module features you can define some environment variables such as this one or this one to to achieve various benefits of the module so let's start from the beginning the script itself accepts few parameters you can see that you can define the root directory where packages are located so it doesn't have to look at the current directory you can force some of the packages uh, that you specify as a string so some so few of them will be forced and the others will uh, will execute normally and you can execute updater for a subset of packages for instance if I uh, call it with with P it will execute only those packages that start with that letter and I have only two packages you you see that it's already done uh, options is ordered hash table that you can pass to update all function and first few you see here are direct options that update all accepts you have network timeout timeout for uh, up for the total update time or if of each package so if some of them block it will get terminated here after this number of seconds you can uh, specify the number of threads to use uh, this is very important you can specify whether updated packages should be pushed to chocolatey community repository or not and then we have a number of plugins that are going to run after after all packages are updated uh, plugins are just regular uh, hash tables and uh, this is the name of the plugin this is hash table keep it keeps its parameters so the first one is report plugin it can generate reports about the things that that are done so we have markdown report here uh, the next one is gist plugin that will uh, upload the, that report so everybody can see it using github gist uh, then we can persist any changes that are done on files on git repository so the package source will always be the latest this was not the case with Catherine packages it used had template uh, keywords in it so those packages were unusable by itself you couldn't choco pack them and stuff like that uh, you couldn't see the latest URL and checksum and so on this is not the case with O you can always you always have reproducible stuff you always have the latest source available because git will persist it then the run information of that of the run uh, is saved in a XML file and you can later inspect it which is very important if you run this on uh, if you do not run this on your own infrastructure you, you we will see about options uh, in this m uh, for this later and finally mail is used to send any errors of the packages uh, to the mails you want so you can expect errors and fix them uh, other stuff are present here for instance this script block is used uh, to run some code before each updater and so on uh, this is very straightforward you just define some environment variables for instance in this file and it will get updated the nice thing about this script is that you can use appware to run your packages so uh, I will first but it will at the end produce report that we are looking at it now this is a report of uh, that is saved on gist for chocolatey core team packages 
and uh, we can see various things here. There are 51 packages. This is the link for uh, PowerShell Gallery, where you can, which you can use to download and install the latest tool. This is the link to the build itself. But uh, let's first look at what happened here. This is this is one run where one package got pushed on the chocolatey community repository and there were three updates it's all sorted out nicely so you see that chromium is updated that python had some network errors that are not that important they will probably fix itself on its own and we have all other packages that are not updated listed here uh, we can uh, click uh, we can click uh, this to go directly to the site of the package and uh, we can see the entire output of each package for instance this is updated chromium entire output is shown you can see that package is pushed and so on uh, very nice, you can uh, see all revisions, so you can get back in time, see what happened before. And finally, you have access to Upwayer build, where you can see PowerShell output of this particular run. Great things about it is that it provides some artifacts. So, first one is report itself, the second one is update info XML that report info generated. So I download it now and uh, I can uh, load it in my local PowerShell to troubleshoot it. So I can see it here. I use import XML to load it, set it to info variable and now I can see what happened in that remote run. For instance, I can see the list of packages I can see the results. Results are ordered by uh, status and we can see here for instance which packages are pushed. Only one package is pushed in this run. We can see its result, complete result and so on. So this is a really good thing to have to troubleshoot failing runs and so on. Uh, also, this stuff is very visible. Everybody can see what you do. You have entire history of all, of all uh, uh, builds and so on. Uh, for furthermore, if package gets pushed, uh, you can see in commits what happened. It will get pushed by the Chocobot user. So if you click it, it will filter only its commits. So this is the history of all pushed packages. You can click, for instance, in this one that got two packages updated and see exact changes that were done by O module. Those are all expected. So this is also nice. We see that versions and checksums are changed. Besides that, you can uh, use specific commit commit messages to actually send some commands to Upware. For instance, this command means that we want active presenter package to be forced in this next run. If I click here and we set explicit version, if we click here and scroll enough, we will see that in this run, this package is forced. Others will execute normally. And the the version will be set to this one explicitly. So it will ignore a new spec version and use this one. And here is the result. The package got pushed. So this is great because you can basically use uh, GitHub as platform for managing your packages. You can uh, manage them via your phone and so on. You basically do not have to own any infrastructure for this. And uh, stuff become, packages become shareable. If you don't want to 
maintain packages anymore you can simply give donate them to some other maintainers who use O or this this repository and we will do it for you so nothing get lost everything can be quickly moved around you have a wiki that contains information about AppVayor, about local run, about plugins, about uh, other users using this framework. You can see their reports, for instance, like this. Okay, this guy has four packages, this guy has eight packages and so on you see that this is all nicely standardized and uh, the entire thing becomes very efficient so there is no reason not to use it if you need any help about this you can join gitter chat we will help you with problems so come use O framework the main benefit is that packages will flow, that updates will become faster and that is really the primary thing about any repository, to have many packages and that they are up to date. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. Feel free to experiment and ask questions and edit the wiki to help others and above all have a nice time doing it. Thank you.